Hello, Dota 2 fans, and welcome to the North American Open Qualifier of the ESL 1 Catalyst 2018 Qualifiers. Poland's first Dota 2 Major, and all these teams vying for a spot to get into that closed qualifier, where they may face up against, you know, what is stiffer competition, but... Uh, nonetheless, a morale boost for sure to be able to face up against some of the more well-known names in the North American region. MRP here, your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster, speaking of North American region. Hope you guys have enjoyed your, your captain's draft. Really sweet ending there today uh, as well. The NFL playoffs pretty tight at the end, so hope your Sunday has been swell. I myself a bit under the weather, of course. Canada, you know, great weather this time of year. Sick country. Uh, but I should be able to muster up enough vocal power to get through these couple of, of BO3s, guys. There's four kind of four matches to be played here in these open qualifiers, all best of three format, and four of those teams all going to be punching their ticket to that closed qualifier uh, to happen in the next couple days. So another match going on simultaneously to this one, but we'll chronicle Morty versus Radiant here and. Uh, not unfamiliar territory to, with this opening from Morty, who are going to go for that Shadow Fiend Clockwork combination. So certainly going to help out the lane of Shadow Fiend early on. And an interesting response from Radiant, who, uh, of course, for my casting pleasure, are playing on the dire side in this one <laughs> with their very unoriginal name. Uh, let me just noob caster, ensure that I'm opening in game here as I didn't see myself shouting on the right, but either way, uh, very interesting to see these teams prioritize their mid laners this early on into the draft, uh, especially Morty's side, who is going to end up with the last pick. But picking up the clockwork, perhaps felt that the Shadow Fiend might be banned, uh, so they do end up opting to grab that early, and Radiant uh, are going to pick up the Queen of Pain in response. Of course, you can consider the Queen of Pain a flex pick in some respect, uh, with her ability to take to the off lane but in general we will see this this hero mid see what kind of early movement radiant ops to uh execute here as uh, obviously the clockwork the shadow fiend and one more hero um are going to be in base for the first little bit doing this whole cog thing so Some interesting first phase bans um, with the Wyvern and the Beastmaster in response. So Morty, that was the first ban for Radiant. Uh, so Morty seeing that Wyvern ban, who uh, is a very good counter to Beastmaster, um, take out the Beastmaster themselves. So that's probably what they felt Radiant was tipping them towards. Um, the second phase bans to me make a lot more sense as far as, you know, kind of recent meta heroes with the Tide and the Tusk being eliminated, especially the Tusk, certainly kind of held in high esteem in Pro Dota as of late. All of my, uh, all of my co-casters are currently drunk in Washington for Captain's Draft. Uh, we are East Coasters over here, us NA scrubs, so unfortunately you're going to have to get the solo cast tonight. But Gareth is in Twitch chat, if you guys want to bother him. Luna Ben going to come out from the Morty side. And certainly any sort of ranged carry can kind of help bolster the lanes uh, for the Radiant side, kind of throw a wrench in, no pun intended, to the plans of the Clockwork early on, who typically tends to roam. Ran out of tea bags recently, guys. I know it's weird North American drinking tea, right? Expect Gareth to say that, but... Uh, I've been drinking warm water with honey, and man, I hate the taste of honey, I gotta say. But hey, you know, gotta keep the pipes primed and ready for this. Back in the casting chair after about, you know, four or five weeks of being idle, which always sucks, but hey, if uh, duty calls, I'll be ready. And the Bane pickup from Morty's side. Certainly a nice one to have up against the Night Stalker. 
just kind of stop him in his tracks when he tends to run at you early game is really nice excuse me to have pl ban is an interesting one coming out from the radiant side I guess Night Stalker, rather single target oriented hero. Queen of Pain, decent at dealing with illusions, but, you know, not the perfect illusion hero counter, so. PL also, you know, a decent hero to kind of flex around if you look to go towards aggressive uh, tri lanes. Um, we'll see what Radiant are feeling as far as their safe laner. Disruptor. Okay, so Disruptor, both good anti-chase and provides a lot of chase. So, you know, certainly a wonderful tandem with the Night Stalker. And Disruptor tends to be more successful when he's on the offensive. In fact, you know, I would say often considered a defensive support, but very powerful on the offensive. Uh, and a good counter to the Bane Fiend's grip and as well to the Clockwork Cogs. So I think a really fitting pick for the Radiant side. Certainly a hero that can also be blown up if left unchecked. And Shadow Fiend provides a wealth of magic damage. As we've seen recently, a lot of the shift in paradigm from you know this sort of right-click oriented SF that we've come become accustomed to recently uh, back to sort of the you know AP or da uh, magic damage oriented uh, shadow feed with the talents that he has available seriously honey tastes like ass guys holy doom. all right the doom bringer is going to be the pickup for morty side which uh Indicates that it'll likely be a three position doom. I mean, the clockwork is also a possibility for that three position, but potentially a little less likely. And it does feel like, you know, in the early game that uh, the Radiant can kind of feast on this doom with a Night Stalker Disruptor to combo. I mean, doom uh, has a lot of raw HP, so generally pretty resilient to uh, magic damage. Early on, he's beefy. Uh, doesn't have that much armor, uh, though. And with the slows of the void and the, the pushback of the glimpse or even a catch in the kinetic field, right clicks are usually more than enough to bring him back to hell. So, you know, so in some respects, you kind of look at this Doom as a distraction to ensure that the Shadow Fiend gets a good early start. Uh, you can also implore the, uh, the good old... Clockwork Doom offlane, as Bane is a pretty damn good self-sufficient support. He has his ability to sustain himself with the Bane, uh, um, with the Brain Sap, excuse me, and also great good right click early on and good movement speed. So he's a great yeah, trader in lane, funny. and for that reason, he can pretty much be uh, a solo safe lane support in most cases. So we could definitely see the uh, the laning configuration that sports a Clockwork and Doom in the bottom lane, and you know now that this Sven is showing. Um, maybe even more likely that Morty puts the clockwork in the bot lane having the cogs there to just kind of annoy him and also press back his aggression uh, could be very worthwhile for Morty can't say there's a clear advantage thus far and I can't say much about comfort, unfortunately. don't have the beat on, really, either of these two teams. But they've made it th this far, so they must have shown some prowess. Apologies for those of you listening in-game who heard me cough. But have the have the button to mute the stream, not quite the, the button to mute the mic. And Nick's Assassin going to be the final ban coming out from Morty's side. And we'll see if the Medusa ban follows. Uh, Medusa certainly excellent against Sven. Pretty damn good against Night Stalker as well. And it could just be that they're baiting this Medusa ban and they have something else in mind. But it uh, really does feel like Radiant have to strongly consider it at this point. 
It's going to be an OD ban. So that's what they were expecting with the Knicks out. But Shadow Fiend already in the pool. Safe lane OD seems kind of underwhelming to me. Uh, we'll see if they look for the Medusa route. PL out of the pool as well. It seems like it could be a great Medusa game. Batrider going to be the pickup. And doesn't have the easiest matchup this game, but ten is a, a really good combination with uh, Disruptor, Night Soccer, and Queen of Pain. All of those heroes very sort of mobile and um, benefit from Vision entering the fight. Um, Night Soccer and Disruptor can counter initiate for Batrider. Batrider can counter initiate for Night Soccer and Queen of Pain. And sort of there's sort of that you know incumbent or they feed off one another let's just say that much i don't want to get too fancy with it it's gonna be the juggernaut pick for morty's side so a little bit more stable i suppose in that safe lane i really would have liked to see the medusa uh, for their end uh, but juggernaut does kind of fill the front line need in some respect um, he can sort of hit buildings with his healing ward and uh, spin off any sort of potential initiation but there's always the lasso, and not that Medusa is innately more resilient to the lasso, but she does often build Lincoln Sphere. Um, so in that respect, perhaps a little bit better as a frontliner. Uh, they already have sort of that ranged core sieging hero in Shadow Fiend, though, so perhaps just kind of diversifying their profile with the Juggernaut pick. Once again, guys, ESL1. I don't even know if I'm saying this right. Katowice, Katowice. I'm not Polish, man, but it is in Poland. I know that much, and uh, it's going to be the first Dota 2 major in that beautiful country. I've heard many good things, and definitely a place I would like to visit. Cough, join Dota. I'm going to make myself cough if I do that again, so that'll be the last time. And we'll see. A lot of this seems to... Kind of, you know, as, you know, this is, I, I suppose, cliche at this point, um, but come down to the lanes. What can the Night Stalker get done? What can this duo of the Clockwork and the Doom get done? Um, can any kills be net uh, in the off lane for um, the Dire side? I was going to say the Radiant side, but, you know, they got to mess me right up on that. Uh, can Bane plus Jug just by their lonesome get anything done uh, up against the Bat Rider? Certainly um, talked about the Medusa pick in the last slot. And the one thing that I failed to kind of recognize until we actually load in here is that that Medusa would have been up against a Batrider. Um, so, you know, they don't ban the Medusa, they ban the OD, and then they pick, fifth pick the Batrider on the Radiant side to say, you know, we dare you, pick a Medusa, go ahead, we're going to make her life miserable in lane. Um, so I think really smart kind of dodge of that pick from Morty into the Juggernaut, um, where... You know, he's just generally stable throughout the game and, and always has that Blade Fury to purge off uh, those Napalm stacks if need be. So, you know, for once, I'm not in the South American region of these types of qualifiers. And still, we have a pause to open the game. Just my luck. In any case, should be a good one. Best of three coming your way, guys. Two best of threes, in fact. And winner of each of these best of threes is going to move on to the closed qualifiers along with 12 invited teams from the North American region. Chance to play in the major. Teams invited to the major already. We've got both Secret and Vici Gaming who are in that epic five game final today of Captain's Draft. We've got Liquid, Newbie, Virtus Pro, widely considered the top three teams in the world, along or top four, I should say, along with Secret. Vici Gaming, M Mineski, Navi, and Evil Geniuses. I don't know why I mentioned Vici Gaming twice, but those eight teams direct invites to the major. So it's going to be loaded with talent. Of course, powered by Intel, brought to you also by Mercedes-Benz ESL1. Working only with the best. Enjoy Nota picking up the coverage, of course. Hopefully we get underway shortly. Let's take a look at some starting items. 
It does look like the Doom will probably play the three with the Stout Shield, the Clock with the Wind Lace, a little bit more roam oriented. He'll be on the four position, which makes sense. On the other side of things, some slow buyers. Boots first Night Stalker. Disruptor playing a hard five, as he tends to do in Pro Dota. It has been a barren cold for the last week or so in Canada. I just returned from Cancun, Mexico uh, to a rude awakening and feel like shit because of it. Thanks, Canada. But getting better and uh, seems like the weather will follow suit next few days. I hope it's not too cold where you guys are at. And here we go with the good old clockwork cog thing. And they mucked that right up. At the beginning, Paradise is going to ping his mid laner. And they're going to communicate to which cog to start at this time. See if he gets facing the right way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Please. <laughs> he only got two. <laughs> the juggernaut even denied one away. Obviously, deserted um, isn't all that experience, let's just say. But this. Uh... There we go. We got three, maybe four? No. But hey, so we make a, a big movement from the uh, Dire side, tagged up as Radiant, of course, uh, towards this bottom rune. As they know they should have the numbers advantage early on, they'll plop down an Observer Ward, see if any unsuspecting soul uh, or perhaps ignorant fool walks down. But uh, for now, no one will bite, and Kiva by his tower in very comfortable a very comfortable position, grammar. Everyone will make it out. Seven souls to Not deserted here. That is easily the lowest total I've seen going to lane on any Shadow Fiend. So, um, hey, seven souls still good. To good amount of damage going into lane. Uh, anytime you're going to have 62 range damage going into lane. is nice.
If I can't have you, no one will. What is this? <laughs> Too bad. A gift from the Tempest of Battle. Fit for a queen. There's a fine line between bravery and 
I'll take that. Regeneration! Thought you had that, didn't you? From life, flame our blade. Okay, looks like the mic disconnected, boys. Great, great stuff. All right, well, I hope you guys saw the quirky team fight recaps. Seems that to be the only value. Guess I lost my cable there for a moment, but hope that wasn't too long. That's always shitty. God strength to be used top lane, and yeah, I was just touching upon kind of the early game struggles of the Shadow Fiend. He's considerably behind his counterparts as far as Cora goes. Now on the high ground, in trouble is the Bane, walking into his own nightmare, as Courier may be in trouble as well. They should be able to get the glimpse back on him here. He actually does make it out of range, it seems. Maybe low on mana. Yeah, low on mana was the disruptor. But nevertheless, it'll secure the tower as they attempt to mount the defense. Queen of Pain under the cover of Invisibility. Dyer trying to make a scan here. Uh, as Pumpkin hunting, but... Only the Juggernaut to show in lane briefly, of course, is a very difficult kill for the Co-op. They don't have Lasso Mana here on the Batrider. And so his contributions should be slim to none. They do finally find that elusive level 6 milestone for the Clockwork here. It's pretty normal time for support at 10 minutes. And he will TP in towards the bottom lane where he can hook up with this Queen of Pain, but it's going to be very hard to kill. Two levels in the blink, Rocket Flare will fly up. We'll see if that glancing blow deters her from sticking around, but right now not feeling threatened whatsoever. Uh, mid lane, Deserted will finally show himself on map once again as beginning to work on this ancient stack is Kiva. And gets rooted up. We'll actually take quite a bit of damage from that and force to pop the salve out, but is going to pole vault his way up this net worth chart. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, Deserted in trouble. Gets a couple of raises off, though. And with the extra bonus damage, will get the kill. Has one more raise for the Disruptor. TP in from the Batrider, though. Oh, well, he canceled it. Still, though, they think better of it. And bottom lane cleaning up the wave. The Juggernaut. Thanks for that. Well, I'll make sure to keep an eye on the old speech bubble in case the cable goes from me again still though all the ultimates should be available shortly yeah the bane the last one to pick it up for the radiant side and we'll see if they can kind of help the shadow fiend claw his way back into this one though they've already lost a top tier one and are going to start taking some punishment into the uh tier one oh, mid. and now speaking of punishment this clockwork yeah he's in a world of hurt here uh burns the mana though of the disruptor level three glimpse should have been able to catch him but it is nighttime and it doesn't look like they had vision at that exact area no he won't be in range just barely short as a clockwork with a headsy play is going to be able to make it back to safety Shout out to Gareth for babysitting me on this one. Uh, obviously, I need it. Top plane beast would going to join up with his one position. 
and they'll get to work on the tier one a lot more quickly than their equivalents will as their tier one very healthy bottom lane and this could be a very worthwhile trade as mid lane deserted probably can just nuke this wave out oh he's gonna look oh the rocket flare actually canceling they may be of it may, may have been able to go for the requiem play there and what level was the nightmare yeah, level two so more than likely could have got that requiem off and that is an unfortunate bit of luck there for the radiant as the rocket flare essentially saving the life of the quab rocket flare again thrown out queen of pain will be pointing back to safety and kiva and his comrades will look to finish off the tier one bottom juggernaut though already putting about 30 40 percent damage by his lonesome into this top lane tier two here he will get sonic stormed up though kinetic field's gonna be there on time as well sonic wave is there beautifully played by pip boy the captain as he drops his full complement of spells instantly. Now a glimpse back is going to find the clockwork as well. He's going to try and TP out. They got the void with the mini stun though. And the scream will be the last thing the clockwork hears as he falls. Now Queen of Pain setting up mid. Jump forward. Scream of Pain is going to be there. Grip though as they turn. Requiem going to fly out as well. And they have the damage to bring down the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain. Doom even used to ensure the kill. It looks like they may have had it without the Doom, but either way, now on the south side, rotating in is Kiva. Nightmare not there in time for the Bane, and a blink forward from the Bat Rider looking for more. Vision should give them enough to find Beastwood, and yep, he's going to get glimpsed back, if my grip could work, into his death. So top lane, they expend the uh, Static Storm and get two kills, the Juggernaut and the Clockwork, and then they finish it off with the Bane and the Doom mid lane. Only uh, in all of that, losing the Queen of Pain albeit a valuable queen of pain but you know overall certainly favoring the dire side look at this look how weird this looks radiant and red guys i'm i'm all messed up hook shot flies just short of the enemy and let's just turn this back on and off that's just wrong it's all just wrong. <laughs> What happens when your cable DCs, I guess. I swear I'm cursed. So SF with a admirable recovery at this point, as I mentioned, he's the only radiant hero not to die in that last in those last couple of engagements with top and mid lane. And a BBTM, despite his most recent death pushing into the tier 2 top lane, has had a really good game on the Juggernaut. And looking to take down uh, his second tower here in the mid lane. And they are setting up on him. TP forward. Blasso will find him. He gets the spin off though. Beautiful play by the Juggernaut. This should mean he survives. But he does get bounced back into the Stormbolt. And yet, never mind that. I thought he had some heroes nearby. He's going to get finished off. Static Storm will ensure the... The Bane dies, and the Glimpse back on the Doom as well. Shadow Strike will try and slow him, and he'll opt for the TPL, but the Void will stop him in his tracks. Three heroes going to die, and as I praise him, the Caster's Curse will take effect. And three kills for the Dire Squad, named the Radiant, as they press forward onto mid lane. I don't even think, well, they did farm this stack. Okay. I was going to look at that Sven's net worth, which is astronomical relative to his peers in this one. And uh, I knew he farmed this stack, but wasn't sure he farmed the Eastern one. And uh, certainly paying dividends at this point. As, you know, he's sitting on Blink Mask Echo Saber treads. 16 minutes into this one. And he's a force to be reckoned with, to say the least. Already an Ogre Club and 600 gold on the way to that Mythical Hammer working on his BKB. And really, how do you deal with him at that point? Just now is going to be a level 2 Omni Slash. And he's got Warcry for that. BKB for pretty much every other source of damage in the game. And Deserted, not really a right-click threat yet. He's got a Yasha. Has smoke movement. Making their way towards top lane. Playing very safe, though, the Dire Squad. Look at this. No one showing on map, and everyone's... Hey, with the trees! Smoke pops though. Rocket Flare will find them a Night Stalker. Not exactly the kill they want, but 
A kill they'll certainly take if they can get it. Grip gonna be used to ensure it. And deserted with his third right click will finish off the Night Soccer. And likely that'll net them a tower here. And this will render everyone else free to show in lane. Or the Radiant side, so. Um, the dire side named Radiant, I should say. But we'll see if they find any major trades. They are starting to put a little bit of punishment into this tier 2 bottom. I am ever no so balls from the Radiant side to press up to high ground. But they do have a Siege Creep. This is 15 DPS if he hits every... If he doesn't miss any hits. You can see it kind of taking effect here. Bottom lane TP's inbound. Looking for the co-op maybe. Well, actually, they're, they're being hunted here. Glimpse, though, going to save the clockwork for now. Actually, glimpses him back up to top lane where he survived. A bit of a miscommunication there. Nightmare onto the blinked forward Queen of Pain. Rotating down from the top side under dire vision, though, if they show. DD on the SF, and that DD is exactly going to be what dissuades any further aggression from the dire team. Team Radiant. <laughs> I'm so done. I'm so done, guys. Mid lane, it's nighttime, so I don't know if there's real kill potential here for these two heroes. They do glimpse back the clock. Maybe he wants to go in here. There's no vision for the Radiant on the other side, though, so they can't ensure that no heroes are behind that tandem of supports. Really haven't seen a, a good Omni Slash just yet this game. No real opportunity for BBTM, but uh, he did go for the Battle Fury and trying to keep pace with the Sven. Hi, him and Deserted Shadow Fiend are. And Shadow Fiend does now have the S and Y, so certainly a force of some respect. Orchid, though, jump forward, finds the Jugger, and yeah, nowhere near a Manta. He is going to get chopped up. And now pincered in between the trees is Beastwood. And he will get a nice stomp off, but likely to die here as well. Glimpse not available, but a blink forward. A couple of right clicks. They had the Echo Saber slow there as well from Kiva. Uh, even though the kinetic field was there, probably would have net the kill. And uh, Beastwood certainly not playing like a Beastwood. He's up in the front lines. Those of you uh, that have only played high quality MOBAs um, in, your, in your lifetime, Han, there's a Han character who's basically Sniper, uh, and his name's Flint Beastwood. Shout out to, uh, I think it's S4, S2 games, the Han creators. Those shots fired, I feel bad about it. <laughs> Nevertheless, just like Dota made quick work of Han, the Radiant making quick work of the Radiant. Grip jump forward, lasso, but the instant grip, nice static storm, however, on the backside, gonna cancel the grip, and the sonic wave connects on three. Requiem, though, hits onto a few, and they do find the return kill onto the disruptor, but still, well, they've dealt with Kiva. Somehow, Orchid Soulburn will finish off the Shadow Fiend, but they get the Bat Rider and Doom up on the Queen of Pain. And they are going to find her on the north side. She should be able to make it away, though. She's actually going to Orchid and Veil up the Doom and continue fighting. She needs to be careful not to stick around too long and does blink away. Nicely played by Pumpkin there. And now rotating down from the south. Crippling Fear up onto the Bane. Jump forward. Scream of Pains. Shadow Strike is there. Really nice play overall by the Radiant. And certainly not their best fight here. As, well, now unmuted, I get to make fun of this. There was a Hex, a couple Dagons, Orchid on the Radiant side, a Butterfly even used, Kaya, Hex, Abyssal Blade, <laughs> Vanguard, what the fuck is going on? Two Midases. Nevertheless, I hope the metrics are right, and they certainly seem to be roughly right. There was a buyback from the Radiant side, I, I recall hearing that sound, uh, and it was on the Bane. Clockwork, the main beneficiary of that with 1,500 gold, and certainly not a major concern as neither the SF nor the Juggernaut really gain much from Who's that. Queen of Pain, 700 gold in her pockets. Night Stalker, much the same, and not a major loss for the Sven, who, as we mentioned before, well, isn't just close to the BKB. He has the full 10-second BKB at this point. So we did see them kind of blow him up in that last fight. They committed a lot to him, and even after the Static Storm canceled the grip, they were able to finish him off. Uh, but with the BKB this time around, uh, the only thing they can do is grip him in place. And as we saw before, a couple of pretty good counters uh, to that grip. So just let the Sven hit the buildings. He gets aggressed upon. He pops a BKB. You've got Blink Orchid, Blink Lasso, Static Storm, Void, Crippling Fear. All these abilities to cancel that grip and allow him to continue pursuit. Smoke is going to catch three members of 
the dire squad as they'll put the queen of pain in mid and look for initiation with the war cry popped by the bat and we'll jump forward finds the lasso onto the doom orchid is there as well god strength gonna be popped not really needed just yet for the sven uh, but they will take out the tier two and they'll play it safe and back out in towards roshan check all right still have my mic boys Medallion up for Umbra, and that'll ensure that they make quick work of this Roche. Trying to mount the response with the Rocket Flare nearby for the Raiden. Almost snatched the kill, actually, and the Hookshot will whiff. Now, top, they do t have a glimpse of the Jugger, who can try to spin TP out. Uh, we'll see how nearby the Lasso is. Doesn't look like they can cancel it, and yeah, he's out and gone away. Lasso was used, of course, mid lane. And therefore, no real way to cancel that. BBTM well aware as he split pushes out in towards the top lane. Close to his blink dagger is Beastwood and BBTM looking for that manta. We saw him die bottom lane to the Orchid and certainly a concern for him. Lincoln Sphere completed up now for the Queen of Pain as well. I mean, she can't be gripped or doomed immediately, at least. Major pickup for the Queen of Pan here. Can kind of allow the uh, counter initiation of the uh, spent. Hookshot will find the Bat Rider on top of a bounty rune. He does end up picking it up, and does he make it away as well? This is just unfair. Rocket Flare, Negative, Urntic are there. Deserted, trying to chase him down with the S and Y. One raise hits, but it's not enough to kill him. And meanwhile, his team working on the top lane as a TP inbound to base from SF. Uh, he is going to be scouted out here, though, by the dire side. So they know he's in base. And all the tier twos now, outer tier towers, have all been eliminated from the radiant side by the radiant team. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm so done. Halberd, though, picked up. We mentioned that 1,500 gold the Clockwork did get in that one engagement. And we'll let him a Halberd. Pretty damn good versus the Sven, especially considering you cannot purge it with BKB. But he has to open with it, right? I mean, if BKB is popped beforehand, he can't Halberd the Sven. So kind of an edge case scenario. And, of course, there's real, that's really the only hero you want to be using the Halberd on. You know, Queen of Pain has some decent right click, but that's not what you buy the item for. Exactly. All right, smoke movement, desperation time for the Radiant Squad, and it's a juicy kill they're looking for mid lane. They won't get it though. Gold remains. As she does have the Lincolns, gets popped, and she'll back. Lasso is going to find the Doom, though, and the Orchid will be there, and that'll be a very big pickoff. Not necessarily because of the hero, but because it allows them to start to push high ground. Night Talker was setting up top lane on the Jugger, uh, who is just going to TP out with the spin, but even without the NS mid lane, they can start to get to work here. At least see if they can force this buyback of the Doombringer. Lincoln's popped on the uh, Queen of Pain. A couple of raises actually she's going to catch as well, but does already have the lifesteal talent and god strength and feeble is going to be there, nightmare is there as well, Eva though starting to get to work, forces out the glyph, stormbolt will connect onto two, sonic storm is there on top, do they have the lasso, sonic wave is there, blink forward, nice hook shot to keep him back as he gets glimpsed, the clockwork likely will fall for it and does alongside his bane, they do end up getting the disruptor though and now pumpkin going to lose the aegis here, Kiva. 
Hanging around. Requiem. Oh, nice. Jump forward. Stormbolt onto two. Ensures the survival of the Queen of Pain. Requiem comes out. Doesn't really connect on many. Soulburn should finish off Deserted here. And it doesn't, actually. He's barely alive. So for now, it's it's somewhat of a hold here. As they lose the Disruptor early, the Night Talk are a little bit late to the fray. They kite the Sven around rather effectively during the God Strength duration. And his BKB duration. And they get the Aegis like nearly for free in that one. Costs a buyback, I believe, on the clockwork, and it indeed does. <laughs> couple of iron talons. You, look, there's a cup. This item's not even in the game, Valve. How did they use two of them? Worthy tribute. Anyways. Pumpkin stocking bot lane. It is nighttime. The smoke does pop though, and they'll catch a glimpse of, no pun intended, the Shadow Fiend. Hookshot is going to find the Bat Rider. They may just want to leave him. Static Storm really only connects onto one, but it's a big one. The Juggernaut, they jump forward and cleave him down. Now the Doom in trouble. Soulburn's going to be there, and a couple more right should finish him with the Brain Sap. Maybe the Night Soccer in trouble, and not that much trouble. Deserted. He is literally that at this point. Deserted amongst two enemy cores and scream will find the clockwork as well meanwhile on the west side working for the bane is kiva and umbra and they'll find him and it looks like the clockwork was able to tp out to base but three members still alive for the dire side mid lane a little bit pushed out and yeah this is backdoor protected kiva he at least forces two buybacks immediately and that likely will end any further aggression towards the radiant base that's now three heroes with buyback on cooldown for the radiant side juggernaut the only one on the radiant to have buyback sven and queen of pain pretty much have buyback for the dire uh, but they're really in no major rush as roshan to respawn in a minute 30. look at the metrics and it just has been a slow decline all game long from the lanes to the mid game to the present and again really haven't seen the impact of the juggernaut it's been amazing play from pip boy the captain on the disruptor he has hit the jugger with the static storm almost every single time and juggernaut! still no mantis style yet for this juggernaut if you get on the edge of the kinetic field and you Manta, you can get into a scenario where like your illusions are placed like that and you're no longer silenced and trapped, but jump forward mid lane, speaking of silence and trap, Shadow Fiend gonna be brought down. That's a dieback and likely a lane of racks here barring a miracle defense without their Shadow Fiend. No Static Storm used for that either. Jump forward, well, Orchid is gonna find the Bane. He's gonna drop, he's dieback as well. And there's the lane of rocks, the first one at least. Tier 2's, as we mentioned before, eliminated quite a while back. And now eliminated are a couple of lanes of rocks here. Jump four, Doom is gonna find the Sven. Static Storm though will find two, and he's continuing the right click. Omni Slash. We'll fly through in pretty much the entire lineup of the Dire side as it comes back onto the Clockwork. Juggernaut really ballsy at this point. Played Furying through five heroes and good game is going to be called in this first game by Morty as they'll throw in the towel to Radiant who cleaned them up in this first game. And really good performance from the supports early on and from the Queen of Pain mostly throughout the mid game. Pumpkin really showing a, a awareness of how much she has left in the tank at all points. 12, 1, and 5 on the Queen of Pain. Compare that to her laning equivalent in the Shadow Fiend who ended up 3, 6, and 7. And it really was just a case of night and day. And 
I don't know if it comes back down to like the 11 souls instead of 7 souls on the cogs, but um, I don't think we can blow that too far out of proportion. Either way, taking game one, Pumpkin and his squad, that's going to be the Radiant. Hopefully they're actually playing on the Radiant next game uh, so I don't lose my mind. But uh, they'll take a 1-0 no victory, guys. Winner moves on to the closed qualifier for North Americas. And uh, loser goes home. So game two coming up here, Morty versus the Radiant. Radiant up 1-0.